All right, now I'll tell you what we're going to read a scripture here before you are seated and turn with me to the book of Ephesians. Thank you, Nidra and Mario and Latricia. Thank you all. I appreciate it so much. I get these spontaneous thoughts sometimes to sing. Amen. God is good. Love the Lord today. I hope you do too. Ephesians chapter 3. Okay, scripture that we read on last week, and we'll read a few others. Um, I hope not to be long. I'm going to take my watch off and then see if I can really not be too long. Amen. My pastor used to do that, and they laugh at him. Because he looks like when he said I'm not going to be long, he'd get twice as bad. But uh, I hope that won't be the problem here. All right, Ephesians chapter 3. Let's see. No, I'm sorry. It's Ephesians 5. We're going to read beginning at verse number 1. And we're going to go down again through... um, 20. I think that's where we went to 20. Let's read responsibly. I'm going to begin verse number one. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become its saints. For this you know that no homonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. That's a key phrase. Uh, but rather reprove them. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you for the word of God. Bless us today, O God, again. And we'll give your name to glory. Thank you for each and every one that's here today under the sound of my voice. Take control and minister life and healing and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I want to encourage you that there is a wonderful, there's a wonderful um, flow of God's divine life and love that's going to flow today to heal wounds and hurts. That's what the Lord gave to me while I was seeking him in prayer. So we want you to just have an open heart and mind for, the, for, the, for this, this presence of God, for that healing life that comes from God alone because he loves his creation. So, um, and oftentimes he heals our memories 
And you can just be certain that that healing that comes from God is so wonderful. It is so, so wonderful. So God bless you as we proceed. All right, a little bit by way of uh, review on, from last week. We did talk about how the Lord is beginning to uh, talk to us more about the spirit world, the spirits, and how they are and have been hindering God's people because uh, in areas where people have not been set free and those, those forces, uh, they are invisible and yet they do influence to hinder a person from receiving the fullness of what God has in mind when we get saved. And uh, so he had been dealing with my heart about that for a while now and just really saying, I want people not only to be healed, but I want them to be delivered from the strongholds and powers of spirits that hinder them from going forward. And uh, so we've been talking a bit about that and uh, I asked the Lord about um, some of the prevailing spirits that are among us and uh, that is influencing his people and God. He said, the first one is rebellion. That's the first one he gave me. The second one, he said, uh, unforgiveness. The third, third one, he said, a religious spirit. And then the fourth, he said, a spirit of infirmity. Now, a spirit of infirmity uh, attacks people's physical body. And a lot of times if a person's body, if a person does not understand what really is going on in the spirit world, they can uh, go to a doctor or physician after physician trying to get help and to no avail. And, um, um, but once they get freed from the spirit of infirmity, right away their bodies begin to heal. It's a marvelous thing. We've seen it happen. It does happen. And uh, God is a God of love. So there have been those that's been crying out in the area of their physical conditions and they want help from God. But God says to you that's been reaching out for a while, uh, he wants to free us from spirits of infirmity that attack our physical body. And once the person is freed from those spiritual powers, um, you know, your life recover. We, I've had the opportunity to see uh, where and when people need to be freed up or delivered. And I dare say there are a lot of people in the church that don't have a clue as to what's needed when it comes to the spirit world. And there are a lot of large churches, just churches in galore, have no idea. But what Jesus promised is this. He said that, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Now that should include every believer that truly believe. He said, in my name they shall drive out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And uh, then he said, if they drink any deadly thing, it'll not harm them. So as a Christian, we have so much going for us. But it's just understanding what we have uh, in and through Jesus Christ. So, we, uh, so I, I, I hope it's to make clear some of these things here that God has been making us aware of. Uh, one of the things that he said in concerning spirits, he said, spirits are creatures of darkness. And he said, they do not like exposure. And he says, um, and he gave me the example of roaches, how roaches can be just all over the place in darkness, just actually having a relaxed time or good time. But the moment the person turns a light on, if you've ever experienced it, then you know what I'm talking about. They just start running everywhere all over the place because they also are insects or creatures of darkness and they cannot stand exposure to light. Now the word of God is truth. 
So I say truth. And the word of God is light. Say light. So if the word of God is truth and light, God gives the light, the truth, so as to shine in our hearts to bring freedom or exposure to the areas where Satan controls so we can get free. Somebody say freedom. So it's important for the light to come if uh, the spiritual powers are going to loose people and let them go. As long as they are in darkness or hidden and not exposed or discovered, they will rule. Hear me closely. They will continue to rule an area of a person's life. So in order for those spirits not to rule in our lives, somebody said, well, I'm a Christian. I don't, that doesn't matter. When Jesus came, he didn't come to the sinners, to the heathen. He came to his own people. Are you with me? He came to his own people and then this is where he healed the sick. This is where he cast out demons. And he said, I'm not called, going, called to the heathen or whatever, but I'm called to the Jews, my own people. And so that was a good indication. So when Christ comes, we get saved, and then there's a sanctifying process that goes on. And in that process, he heals us from a lot of wounds and hurts, painful memories, uh, uh, concepts, that are contrary to truth. And that's why he says, if you continue in my word, that is truth, light, then you are my followers or my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It is the exposure to darkness by the light of God's word that will enable us to be free. Are you with me? I want you to follow with me now. I'm not looking for brownie points. I'm looking for your ears to perk up so you can hear what the Lord is saying. And God is uh, in the process of setting people free. And uh, I remember years ago, we were just bringing healing and healing to some memories and, and this kind of thing here. And then the Lord says, and he said to me, he said, not only healing, he said, there is deliverance needed. And uh, deliverance from fear, deliverance from uh, anger and hate or bitterness and the list can go on, but uh, the, the, the a fort, a fortified place is mentioned in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And he says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And then in parentheses, the, the writers put casting down imaginations or oh, that word in the Greek means arrogant reasoning pulling down arrogant reasoning that exalts itself against the knowledge of God against the knowledge of truth so he said the weapons are not carnal we don't deal with it after the uh, natural, but he said those weapons are mighty through God to pull down those fortified places in our minds. They pull them down. A person says, I don't care what nobody says, I'm not going to do this. That's a fortified place. And so the word of God is able to pull that down, that type of reasoning to pull it down so that that person will say Lord forgive me I didn't mean it I didn't understand so that's what it means for the weapons of God it takes the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit will pull down any reasoning that reasons itself against truth isn't that right now remember Jesus came to reveal himself who is truth the light and then he left the assignment to his followers that we must continue to share the light of truth of God's word 
why Jesus came. He says, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And a part of him giving life is replacing things that are devastating to our minds and our emotions and our hearts um, and replacing it with the love and the light that comes through Jesus Christ. And boy, it makes a difference. I mean, it makes a difference. If you've never been freed or touched by the love and by the power of Jesus Christ, you are in for a treat. God is a good God. And he's not condemning. He loves you with a perfect love. But the, 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 the groom is getting his bride ready for his return. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. So we had been talking about rebellion. Rebellion, um, we, we started, and I don't know how the Holy Spirit may work. But as he revealed to me, because I said, Lord, what are the prevailing spirits among us? that we need to be freed from or not allowing them to take control and have their way in our lives. So he said, and I just named them in the first one was rebellion. So I said, okay, let's do it in the order by the grace of God, unless he preempt and says, okay, I want you to do this here. So we try to yield over to him. But the important thing is God is here freeing us up. And uh, my wife was talking as we were at the altar on yesterday, uh, last Sunday, the Holy Spirit spoke to her and says, uh, I'm giving people an opportunity because I'm soon to return. It's really, really important that you hear what's being said. And um, once this happened, I, I, you just got a taste of freedom. I mean, you got to taste of freedom to appreciate what is being said. Once you taste of freedom, you will never Ever want to go back to bondage freedom comes and it's a wonderful thing amen so we we're talking about rebellion and a few little statements about it rebellion and the source of rebellion of course Webster divine defines rebellion as an act of open or violent resistance to an established government or ruler. It also says it's disobedience and disrespect for authority. The origin of rebellion, Lucifer. And let me read something in Ezekiel 28. Satan rebelled against God, and as he rebelled against God in heaven, he and one-third of the angels, the Bible said, rebelled against God. Can you imagine him being and knowing what he knew and then rebelling against God and he was in heaven? Can you imagine that kind of, uh, that, that's kind of hard to, uh, to, to grasp, but that's what happened. All right. So now, we go to Ezekiel 28, and I'll read something here. He talks about the pride of Tyrus, King, the prince of Tyrus, but he was influenced by Lucifer. Verse 11 says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say to him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been, or you've been, in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire and emerald, the carbuncle and gold, the workmanship of the, thy tab tabres and of thy pipes, was prepared in thee in the day that you was created. Thou art, or you are the anointed cherub that covereth, and I've set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. You've walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. 
You was perfect in your ways from the day that you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the multitude of your merchandise, they've filled the midst of you with violence. You've sinned, therefore I will cast you as profane out of the mountain of God and I'll destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. The, you, thou hast corrupted your wisdom by reason of your brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold you. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of your in iniquities, by the iniquity of your traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of you. It shall devour you, and I will bring you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold you. All they that know you among the people shall be established, astonished at you. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. So here he was talking about Lucifer, the anointed cherub. He had such a high place in the economy and the kingdom of God. And uh, someone said he was the worship leader. He, was, he's, he had such beauty upon him. And, uh, but his beauty, he got lifted up in pride because of his beauty. And he said, it is written, I will exalt my throne above the stars. He said, I will be like the most high. And that's when the iniquity was found in his heart. And so he wanted to, he wasn't good enough for him, for God to make him rule over kingdom, but he wanted to be like God. And so that these words were given to him. And uh, so that's where rebellion started there. And then the, what we understand through Genesis, it talks about um, when God made man, Adam, and he gave him uh, instructions and says of the garden, of the trees that's in the midst of the garden, you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you may not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, he said, you shall surely die. And he did. He ate as his wife gave him the fruit. He disobeyed. Now, it's one thing for humans to obey, but it's another thing for Lucifer to obey, or disobey, and for Adam, the first one that was made, because Adam didn't have flaws. He was perfect. God made him perfect. And uh, when God looked at him after he made him, he said, that's good. In other words, there's no flaws there. He was perfect and, and made by God. And, and so he was not like we with a deaf doom body. He didn't have a deaf doom body at the time. The deaf doom body came when he disobeyed. When he disobeyed, sin came in. So that's when the deaf doom body came. And that's why we, have, we live in this deaf doom bodies until the Bible says we will all be changed. At that time, we're going to experience a miracle so fantastic. These mortals, mortal bodies, deaf doom, will Put on immortality. We become immortal. Like the angels. That's what will take place. But it will happen so fast. And so we have so much good things to look forward to. And when you think about that. You know it's worth. Giving God your best. Isn't that right? It's best giving God your all. Hallelujah. It's it's worth whatever sacrifice we need to make. Hallelujah. It's worth it all. But Paul said, I, I suppose that the, the, the uh, afflictions or the sufferings, 
that we suffer down here are not worthy to be compared with the glory that's going to be revealed in us. Oh, saints of God, there's so much to look forward to. And I think sometimes uh, as ministers, we don't show people the glimpse of the glory of God that's coming our way. We are not suffering just for nothing. There is a reward. There is a prize. There is something worth waiting for. There's something worth sacrificing for. And you know, if there's something, if you have, how many of you have received something or had the idea that, uh, you wanted something, but you didn't want it bad enough to, to pay the price for it. How many know you don't get it, right? But how much more with what we have in God, it is worth it to allow him to mold and fashion us and make us and, and impart more knowledge and understanding and wisdom to get us to the place where he wants us here on earth, right? Because the reward, of course, will be uh, um, the, the change and transformation and the, the, the consummation of the salvation that God promised. We, we, we will all um, be a partakers of. So, uh, but rebellion started out with Lucifer and a third of the angels rebelled. And the Bible says in Revelation that angels are reserved in everlasting chains of darkness until the time. So they, uh, 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 they are there. And uh, so we look at Genesis, we look at the origin and the source of the rebellion. That's the point that I was making, the origin uh, and, and source of rebellion. Satan is, is, is this, the source of rebellion. And the Lord said to me, as I was studying on a week or so ago, he said, the seed of rebellion is pride. The seed of rebellion is pride. That's the seed. So I thought about the seed, and a seed is the is actually that source which uh, grows and everything comes out of that seed, right? And it's the same way with pride. A person cannot rebel really in the, in, in the true sense of the word unless pride is at the root somewhere. You hear what I'm saying? And so God said to me, he said, the seed of rebellion is pride. And we all have to watch it. Amen. You all have to watch it. We haven't arrived yet, so we all have to watch it and be uh, mindful. Um, and so um, the defining rebellion and the origin was the beginning of it. And you know as well as I know that Satan succeeded for a while in what he accomplished. And since he succeeded for a while in what he accomplished, then naturally he is going to work at it, uh, uh, you know, constantly. Ephesians 2 says, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, right? Where in time past, he says, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience. So that same spirit of Satan was working in the earth to cause people to rebel. Are you with me? All right. So, uh, uh, so we, you know, but he said he quickened us. He made us alive. We we're made alive by the power of God. And so as I think Tricia a couple of sermons ago, a couple of weeks ago mentioned that we still must keep in step with the spirit. Isn't that right? We've been born again and all those good things, here, but we still learn how to walk in the spirit if we're going to find victory in God. So I say victory. All right, so we talked on last time, we also about um, if, if the definition is right, rebellion dealing with uh, disobedience and disrespect for authority or act of open or violent resistance to an established government or ruler, then we see how Lucifer did just that. We see how uh, he uh, moved through uh, Adam and Eve and caused the confusion and the chaos and the sin the darkness and everything and death to come upon us as people that God never intended for that to happen. So we see rebellion can be very ugly and it has some very bad consequences. Isn't that right? All right. So what are you, what are we, what are, we're, uh, who is the authority in this kind of thing? All right. There are three areas. One is the family. God has instituted the family. Somebody say family. And then God has also instituted the church. Somebody say church. And then finally, the civil government, the government of God, God uh, government here as we know it, 
Uh, so God says, obey the powers, the higher powers. You know, in other words, uh, it, it, it's the governmental authorities. We are to submit to them, right, as long as they're not uh, teaching us about uh, to do against God as far as sin. But we are to submit ourselves, you know. One man was, uh, year, many, many years ago, he was... Uh, uh, just disobeying the governmental authorities. And, and uh, so he said, well, God understands, you know. And see, he was just driving with illegal license, no insurance, and so on. I said, well, now, buddy, this is not going to work. The Bible tells us to obey uh, uh, the uh, authorities as well. So isn't that right? So, uh, you know, he, he said he loved the Lord, but he was just driving around and just saying, well, the Lord's going to protect me. But we are to submit to these rules and regulations of the government, right? As long as they don't uh, uh, interfere with the basic uh, uh, doing right before God. So that's the government. And then there's also the church. He said, obey them that have rule over you and submit yourself. Anybody seen that scripture? Yes. Amen. See, this is, this is the order and government of God. And then finally he says, uh, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Anybody remember that scripture? Wives, submit to your husband. You hear that? And man submit himself to God, right? So there's a family. So there's order in, in the family. There's order in the church. Or there's, and, and there's order in the government. There is, there is that submission. Now, when either of those things are just ignored and mankind does what he wants to do, he can open himself for rebellion. And once he opened himself for rebellion, he can suffer the consequences of rebellion. And so there's so many times I wish that it was that many would teach more about how we are to live in this life here. And it would help people uh, not have to suffer so many things in vain. And uh, so. All right. Now, he's, Ephesians 6 says, uh, I'm going to read it because we talk first to the family. We said truth is light, right? And light exposes darkness, right? Ephesians 6, verse 1, Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So he goes on here. He talks about the family. During that time, they had servants, and he gave instructions to servants to their masters. But this was the family, so this was the order. Somebody say order. order. And this is God. It's a part of what he's doing today, bringing and restoring order. Say it one more time, order. See, God is a God of order. If you look at the whole of the universe, you see so much order and precision. God is, God is so beautiful. We, we need order. We need divine order. Isn't that right? And if we have that order, then things go well, go well, and uh, we are able to deal with the uh, forces that comes to try to um, sabotage what God does in our life. So, and... Oh, we talked already about the Hebrews. I'm going to read in Hebrews so that uh, if you have, if you want to mark, mark these down and go back and study this on your own time. Hebrews 13, you know, this deals with the, the, the church here in, in, in order. He says, verse 16, but to do good and communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourself. For they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief because that is unprofitable for you. So we see here the submission here to church leadership or the government of God, right? And then the other one, let me see if I can get that in, uh, found in Hebrews uh, 12, I believe it. Uh, let me see. No, I'm sorry, Romans, Romans uh, 12 or 13. Romans 13 says, verse 1, let every soul be subject to the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore, and listen to this, whosoever therefore resisteth the power, 
resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation, because rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and you shall have praise of the same, for he's the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he bear not the sword in vain, for he's the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. All right. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. All right. So it goes on here. But I just wanted to make, to uh, reiterate the three areas there where the submission to authority is the family, the church, and government. Say that with them. Family, church, and government. All right, so we submit ourselves because now we have a submissive spirit because we've been born again. Are you with me? Somebody may be saying, I don't know how this is. I got some situation that has not to do with that, but you got to hear what I'm saying. It may be somewhere in the past that that thing has happened and interfered with your present state. Yes, it's important to follow because the Lord, remember, he knows everything. And uh, so as he works with us and we work with him, we will see the benefit of this. Now, the fruit of rebellion, disobedience, self-importance, defiant, pride, rejection of authority, selfishness, vanity, Strife, arguments, to name a few. To name a few. The list is long. But listen to what Psalm 68 has to say, and I think this may bless us here. Psalms 68. Psalm 68. Verse... Four said, sing unto God, sing praises to his name, extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Jah, and rejoice before him, a father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. God said it, verse six is the key verse, the solitary or the lonely in families. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. God said it, the solitary or the lonely in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. But the rebellious dwell in a dry land. So, we are not rebellious by nature. That's what I want you to understand. We are children of God, so we have an obedient spirit. Are you with me? Hello? We have an obedient spirit. So God purges so that the obedient spirit can prevail. Are you with me? The obedient spirit may get some problems if some of those spirits that came in through rejection from authority from childhood and has not been dealt with properly. Are you with me? And so this is what's happening in the body of Christ at large. A lot of people, some of them are in dry places and do not understand why. They don't understand why they not, hadn't been able to get the help from the Lord that they so desire. God has given us instruction. He's given us insight. And if we can grasp what he's saying, 
uh, he's going to bless him because as a matter of fact, uh, at the end of this service, God's going to bless some people and bring healing to a lot of the wounds. You and I know when you've been a part of the ministry here for a long time, so you understand that hurts and wounds come through acts of traumas and so on, right? We already, we don't need to go there, but um, be that as it may, we still need to be healed and freed up from those things, right? Amen. All right. So he said the rebellious dwells in dry places. So uh, when you think in terms of dry land, it actually means in Hebrew, uh, sun scorched. Where the sun, uh, you know, you, go, you look out west where there's no, it hadn't been sufficient rain. And it's so hot, the ground cracks. It's a parched place. It's a parched place. Fires start and so many other things start out. It's, it's a parched place. And God, some of us are facing that today. But you got to hear what I'm trying to say. Don't be mad at me. Don't be mad at me. I'm not, I'm just trying to share what God is saying, all right? <laughs> now, now, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I really want you to hear this because God wants to free his people up. And those spirits of rebellion fight because they don't want to come out. They don't want to come out. They don't want to come out. I know what I'm saying. So he doesn't want us to cooperate with those spirits. When we cooperate with the spirits, I'll share with you what God shared with me before I finish. But a lot of times we're cooperating with spirits and don't know it. We're just cooperating with demons. It's a sad thing. We, we've been born again. We've been born of the spirit where there's life flowing to us. All right. Amen, lights. <laughs> so I, I expect when we're dealing with spirits of rebellion that there's opposition. I expect that. But if a person don't know, know they need to be free, they don't know what they're fighting against. Let me see. I go on before. because I got, I got to share with you what the Lord said because it's very important. Some of you are struggling because you don't know when those spirits hit you and move you. That is, you're fighting against the Lord and you don't know it. Okay, dry places. So some people are in dry places because of rebellion. So we have to go back to the point of origin, go back to when this person rebelled against their mom or their dad or their whoever it was, and that spirit set in. And some people don't believe you, a, a Christian can actually have a spirit, but that's what they believe. It doesn't make it true. I've seen them. I've seen them in Christians' lives, and if they weren't Christians, they sure spoke in tongues. They sure did a whole lot of things that Christians do, isn't that right? And I, and, but they, they, they got free. They needed to be free. And the Lord wants people to be free. He wants you to be free. A lot of strife and stuff that goes on is not from the Lord. God has not given you that kind of spirit. A, a, a spirit that rebels against what God says. He's given you a spirit that is compliant. A spirit that complies. A spirit that's easy to be entreated. Not a spirit that fights against truth, but a spirit that is easy to be convinced. Hallelujah. That's the spirit that we are of. And that's what God wants us to understand. That I'm going to free you up, but I want you to understand the concepts of how rebellion work. Otherwise, you'll be communicating and participating with spirits of rebellion. Okay. So, the dry places... Is where it's a part of the fruit of rebellion. 
Okay, and then uh, he mentioned on the last time, he says, demons study individuals. He's, demons study people, so you, we must be careful how we live. Isn't that right? They study a person's every move. Demons. They assign themselves or they're assigned by the enemy to a people. And I know that this is not popular talking about demons, but uh, back here a few, uh, couple of months ago, God said, I want you to expose the spirits of darkness. He said, because they're creatures of darkness, and if you don't expose them, they'll be there and they'll remain. And a lot of people are suffering because of spirits that came in during their childhood and they don't understand. But if you just listen to what I'm trying to tell you, you can get free. You don't have to live there. You don't have to live there. So demons study individuals. I, I, I read a little bit on that, how demons study. They study people. They study the every move. They study the things that people like. They study the habits. They study. When, when people have emotional outbursts, if they do it frequently, demons, remember, they are studying people. So the Bible says, be careful how you live. Isn't that right? You must be careful how you live because they're, they're there studying you. Now, I know that there's the balance of what I'm trying to say, but right now we're trying to expose the spirits of darkness, and the Lord said to expose their activities. This is what I want you to see. We're exposing demonic activities. We'll deal with the fact that we're sons of God and we've been anointed with power. We'll deal with that later, okay? But right now we're dealing with exposing the demons of darkness. How they're hindering God's people. A lot of times people don't know how to progress spiritually. and They don't understand what's holding them back. But God in his great love and his wisdom says, tell them and expose those spirits of darkness so that people can get free from rebellion and unforgiveness. Hello. Somebody said it's tight, but it's right. Amen. So that's why healing of memories is important. Memories of childhood, memories of words and things that parents may have said or done, ways that has happened to people, and so they were distasteful to a person's life, and so they may have adopted an attitude that is just contrary or rebellious, and so they may be Christians, but that same attitude of rebellion is still there. So God has to heal. He wants to heal. He longs to heal. He longs to set people free. And God sees that there are people suffering a lot. Christians suffering really bad. And it's like God says, I want to help them. I want to help them. But they've got to hear what I'm trying to say. Every service can't be a service where you got a high and you leave. Every service can't be that where there's got to be a balance of teaching and instructing in the ways of God, for God is holy. Isn't that right? And he said, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. It is holiness too. Isn't that right? Yeah. And so uh, I got to say what I got to say and I got to do what I got to do. So bear with me. Healing of memories. Is necessary. Sometimes God goes back and heals memories where people have bad memories of authority. Bad memories of authority. And so it may be a mom, it could be a dad, it could be an uncle, or some person of significance, and or it could be a spouse or whatever. And they put a real bad sore taste in the mouth. Maybe the way they live, maybe the way they handle. Uh, the children and maybe the things that they said, uh, but they, they, they brought a lot of pain to the child and the child, or they may have not been there all, at all, just may have been totally abandoned. So whatever the anger, whatever the pain is, what God has to do is to meet that person now with his kind of love, with his kind of grace that will help that person overcome. And so momentarily, the person may feel themselves getting angry, but that's okay as long as you don't stay there. Isn't that right? Because the goal is healing. The goal is freedom. God is a liberator, and he 
can do it so wonderful. And I'm, I'm so convinced that there. And uh, so, so bear with me now. Like I said, we have to deal with the spirits that have been plaguing your life. You'll thank me later. You might not thank me now, but you'll thank me later after you're free. How do I know? Because I've been where you are, some of us. I've been there. And it's really not pleasant. It's not pleasant. You want to be free. You want to be free. I know what it is to be approached and harassed by these evil spirits and not knowing how to get free. I know what that is like. But the thing that he had to try to make me see and still doing it is that watch how they work. You got to know how they, their, their activities so that you'll know how to deal with them, right? By the Spirit of God. Because if you don't know that a spirit is harassing you, then you're certainly not going to attack it in warfare. Isn't that right? But you got to understand their activities. They're very shrewd and subtle in how they operate. And once we expose them, they may get mad, but somebody gets free in the process. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody gets free when demons are exposed. I saw him, I saw Satan this morning, or the spirit, and the, he was mad with me. I mean, he was, he was just mad. Just mad because I'm exposing him. I, I'm just doing my job. Hey, hey, I, I'm just doing my job. Isn't that right? <laughs> Demons demon get mad, but I know I understand. Because they don't want you free. That's the bottom line. They do not want you free. They want you to continue in strife. They want you to continue, maybe a husband and wife fussing and arguing. They want you to, they want to continue just rebelling. And the Lord says, okay, I want the church to do so and so. And the person that's in the rebellion says, well, I'm not doing it. Just that simple. I'm not doing it. You're under influence. Come on, y'all. You're under influence. Somebody said, well, God gave me a free will. Yeah, he did. But he said, you know, we must have a submissive kind of spirit. Yeah. Oh, let me say it like this. Paul said, a teachable spirit. Some people don't have a teachable spirit. If they don't like what's said, then they don't want to hear it. But that's not what God has called us to. Isn't that right? We take the collard greens along with the applesauce. We got it, isn't that right? As long as it is truth. Somebody say truth. truth. Hallelujah. Amen. I discovered that collard greens are better for me than applesauce. They don't taste as good, but they are better for me. Hallelujah. You, you, you got to hear what I'm trying to say. Oh, my God. Now, now, okay, I don't want to go there, but I want to tell you that the babies don't like stuff that tastes bitter. I ain't going to say no more about that, but I just want to say, Sila. What are you saying, Brother Herring? I am saying the person that you're serving is better than life. He is incredibly good. He is so wonderful. He sees what we are facing. He's crying out to help us. That's his desire. That's his, that's his love for us. He's saying, I know you don't understand what I'm trying to say and do. But that's what he said to me. He said, it's my prerogative. He said, that's my prerogative if I want to order hearts right. I said, okay, do what you need to do, Lord. Because one day we had one of those messages. I said, now, Lord, da, 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 da. He said, it's my prerogative to order hearts right before me. In other words, that's his doing. I can't. Say, okay, God, if you don't come this way, then I don't want to talk to the people. I can't do it that way. I must submit to him and all of the things that he's trying to say. Isn't that right? If otherwise, then guess what's going to happen? I'm going to be a pleaser of men. So I no longer will please God because I've become a pleaser of men. 
and I refuse to be a pleaser of men. Hallelujah, somebody. God is good. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Look at somebody said, ain't nobody mad but the devil. Hallelujah. He don't like exposure. I saw him in the spirit this morning when I was on my knees. Oh, he was mad with me. He was get away from me, you know. That, that's what he did. That's what he looked. I said, all right, devil. I'm, something good is going to happen today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Remember this, saints. God loves us. He loves us with an everlasting love. And his goal is freedom. All right, but let me hasten to the conclusion. I said I wouldn't be long, but it looked like uh, I'm going to bring this to a conclusion. Okay, so the Lord says to remind the people that demons are behind all arguments. Ephesians 6 said we don't fight against flesh and blood, right? But against those hidden forces. All right. Now, here's what God said. I want you to think about this. There's four things that he said to me. He said God's bringing in order and alignment his purposes for his purposes. I was sitting there when I was in prayer and just worshiping and so on and then all of a sudden I grabbed my pen I heard him speaking. He said God is bringing things in order and alignment with his purpose. The second thing he said we must be set free from the spirit of rebellion if we're going to continually obey God. Now, that doesn't mean everybody got a spirit of rebellion. I, you know, I'm not that naive. But I'm trying to make a point, okay? For some that needs that freedom to be, I mean, to be set free from the spirits of rebellion. You know, I don't know how many, but I, I'm not interested in how many. But I'm, I'm trying to share with you what the Lord said. Uh, so he said, we must be set free from the spirit of rebellion in order to obey him. Because God gave us not a spirit of rebellion, and Right? He gave us a spirit of love and power and soundness of mind. So that's the spirit that he gave us. And uh, so, all right. The third thing he said, there's a wonderful flow of God's love and compassion to heal the wounds. So there's a wonderful flow of God's love and compassion that wants to, to minister to us today. So I hope that you'll keep an open heart for God to minister to you today. He's got a plan. And God can go to the deepest wounds like you've never seen before. And I mean, once he goes there, there's freedom in your soul like you've never experienced before. And it is God's healing love that can go deep, deep where the hurts and the wounds of life and traumas. God is able because that's his love for you and I. So please, whatever you do, open your heart and say, God, I want what you want for me. Hallelujah. And God will give it. And then the fourth thing he said was this. He said, see God and his purpose. He said, it's his purpose and not man. This is what he said. Now, the other part of that, he said, lest you be found fighting against God. Now, I didn't write this down here when I came here, you know, and I, that's what he gave me while I was in prayer this morning. I had no idea what God had in mind. But the fourth thing, like I said, he said, see God and his purposes. He said, it's his purpose and not man. And he said, lest you be found fighting against God. Are you with me? Yeah. Uh, and my wife and I was reading in the Old Testament about um, Nadab and Abihu. And they was coming up against Moses and yeah. so on. And that was a horrible scene. Yeah. And what God pointed out. See, no, they they ain't rebelling against you, Moses. No, they're rebelling against me. And so what I'm trying to share with you, this is what God said while I was, uh, you know, all this written down here because uh, it was this morning, not knowing what we're supposed to do. And uh, he says, uh, lest you be found fighting against God. Nobody wants to do that. Are you with me? I mean, I, I can handle a lot of things, but I can't handle a fight trying to fight against God. That's not one of the things I want to do. He's too big. He's too wise. He's a good God. Okay, so those are the things that God gave to me this morning. And um, last, last, last but not least. All right. Father, I'm, I'm, I'm concluding because that's, what, that's all you gave me. 
I'm thanking you right now. I'm blessing you right now. And I'm magnifying you. I thank you for the people of God. I thank you for bringing us in order, in alignment with your divine purpose. Lord, you are such a good God. I ask now that your precious Holy Spirit would minister healing to the wounds and to the hurts that your people have faced. Take control, have your way, be lifted up, be glorified, so that when I leave this place, I can be satisfied that I've done the best I understood you to tell me. I thank you, Lord, for your people, and I'm giving you glory right now. I want you to join me in giving him praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you because you're a great God. 